We started out with 10, now we're cutting our way down to five. I mean, that's what we're working for. I want to get to the finals, I want to win, you know? Tyler White was really quick on the goal, but Ben Nicely is going to reel him in in the end. Got the jitters out of the way, first event. It's always probably the toughest. Like we've been sitting around waiting for that chop for a little over a year now. Five athletes will punch their tickets to the semifinals of the U.S. Championship. Round one competition of steep timber sports continue. Welcome for more of it. Uh, 2021 Steel Timber Sports U.S. Qualifiers, the road to the championship. We're focusing on Pool A. Tommy Sanders here with Kevin Holtz, and we are halfway through our competition in Pool A, Kevin. We have uh, eliminated two of our competitors, Billy Ad Adams and Dave Engasser. Eight will continue on, and we'll lose some more after the next two disciplines. Now, who seem to be the, the guys you keep your eyes on today? Well, sad to see Billy and Dave go. Those are guys from my region. Hate to lose anybody, but that's the nature of the game. We're moving on. I still like, obviously, Cassidy Shear at, at the top of the heap. I still like Adam Lefko. I still like Ben Nicely. I'm watching Mark Boquin, though. I'm seeing a lot of big progress out of this man. Watch for him to get in there and play spoiler along the way. Let's take a look at how our three-round competition is scored. In round one, our 10 competitors will compete in three events, the underhand, the stock saw, and the standing block. Then only our top eight advance after that round into round two. In this round, they'll compete in the single puck and the springboard. Six athletes with the most points after round two advance to the final round. The remaining field of six survivors will compete in the hot zone. This unpredictable event will be the final competition to decide who moves on to the semifinal round. Certainly ratchets up the stress of making three complete and clean cuts within the allowed distance. So let's get started on this next segment of our journey to find the U.S. champion for 2021. If you've followed Steel Timber Sports through the years, you think of A Heat as two competitors on the same stage in the same town, chopping and sawing against one another. Well, of course, everyone knows what's happened the last couple of years. Of course, lots of health concerns, and it was decided that this time around we would do virtual matchups in our pool competition. From four different locations around the country, Centralia, Washington, Hayward, Wisconsin, Cherry Valley, New York, and Mount Gilead, North Carolina, we have matchups that can be cross country. And that's what you're seeing, the result of that today. That's the way we're doing our heats. We're ready to go with round two action and we'll get started with single buck. On go, you wanna go full speed on a push or a pull stroke using the entire saw. It's a two to three peg and raker. The pegs are the teeth. They cut the wood, the rakers clean the wood. You want to use the full saw, cutting on the forward stroke, cutting on the back stroke, using every muscle in your body from your toes all the way up to your head, driving the saw with confidence through the entire log. If you deviate from your technique, you can dive a raker into the wood, bringing you to a sudden stop. Then you have to regain that momentum, losing time. Got the saws back out again. We're ready for the single buck. This is going to be Richard Jordan going up against Ben One, Nicely. Go. Ben Nicely again using that reach to his advantage. Richard Jordan, just a powerhouse. Wouldn't want to take him on in an arm wrestling co uh, competition as he wades down through this block. It's going to be advantage Nicely, though, using more of that saw to his own benefit and just running that saw efficiently. 17.2 for Richard Jordan. Ben Nicely, though, 14.74. Well, okay, a little sticky in the middle. Um, that's really the only thing I think I could have smoothed up. Uh, the wood was nice and soft. The yeah, saw was cutting pretty well, so I'm happy. Ready to go now with heat number two. Adam Lefko kind of cruising along, looking good to qualify, pass on to the next stage. Ben Marshall, though, a different story. He needs to put down a good time here. On left go, not necessarily synonymous with single bucking. He's an exceptional chopper, an exceptional axman, exceptional power sawyer. He's got some help there from Matt Slingeland, though, his wedge man, his second. And he is there. He's about a half a push behind Ben Marshall. Ben Marshall, you may recognize his second, gentleman by the name of Dave Jewett. We talk a lot about Adam's size, and this is an event that doesn't play well to it. He's running a shorter saw than Ben Marshall. 
He's also a shorter individual, so the top of this log is tougher for him. Once he gets down into his power zone, he can really lay onto it. But through the top maybe quarter or eighth of that log, it is a tough go for Adam Lefko. Felt great, a little sticky on the top, but got into it, held my window and made sure to keep it on the pole and seemed to go quite well. Ben Marshall a time of 13.04, so he will do no worse than fifth place. He's leading right now with that time. Competition time to beat Ben Marshall's 13.04. Here goes David Moses on the left, and up against Mark Boquist. Now here are two Titans, different levels of experience. Moses has been at it for quite some time, Boquist less so, but they are both exceptionally powerful. Sawyers, Boquist is running away with this heat. Unbelievable run from Boquin. We'll go back and take a look at this run side by side. I was ready to call this as a tight heat, tight race photo finish. Mark Boquin, though, just absolutely destroys through the middle of this block. That's where the hard work is. That's where you're cutting the full diameter. You can see a little bit of a fist pump and a big smile at the end. He knows that's a good run. I mean, it was pretty nice. <laughs> I can't complain. It was smooth, the saw was moving, the saw was dropping. Pulling good noodles, felt great, and it was a great cut. You know, I'm very happy with it. Sub 11 seconds, 10.61, best time so far. Put down by Mark Boquin, David Moses, 12.85. Final heat of the single buck, New England's Tyler White, up against our defending champion, Cassidy Shear. Tyler White is the king of go. He was on the go in the underhand. He is on the go here in the single buck. Look at a little robotic versus the fluidity of, of Cassidy Shear. Look at these guys off together. Go back and take another look at the finish here between Tyler White and Cassidy Shear. Remember, virtual format. These guys are not actually on the same stage, but Stroke for stroke, they are right together, both with a big push at the bottom. Great cuts from both these competitors, just not enough to take down Mark Boquin. Single buck's always kind of been my thing. Uh, I tell a lot of guys embrace the bulk for single buck, because you can just move the saw. I mean, skinny guys can do it too, but I don't usually have a problem moving the saw, and. If I have any kind of decent pace when I'm cutting, I usually have a really good cut, so I'm happy with it. And there you go, one one hundredth of a second. Tyler White with 11.91, Cassidy Shear 11.92, which means Mark Boquin, 10.61, your champion in single buck. We're halfway through round two of our knockout rounds and time is running out for the athletes on the bubble. Right now, that's Ben Marshall and Richard Jordan. They'll have one more chance to make a move as athletes scale a nine-foot tree, Springboard is next. Steel Timber Sports is sponsored by Steel, maker of a full line of gasoline and battery-powered handheld outdoor power equipment. Find yours at steelusa.com. By the Duluth Trading Company, the official workwear of Steel Timber Sports. By Ace Hardware, Ace is the helpful place. And by John Deere, nothing runs like a deer. Centralia, Washington, one of the four locations hosting competitors for our first ever virtual competition. We have athletes competing from around the country vying for one of the 20 spots in the 2021 Steel Timber Sports U.S. Championship semifinals. We are halfway through our round two or our knockout rounds. And right now, Richard Jordan and Ben Marshall sit at the bottom of the leaderboard and in danger of elimination. The goal for today, be one of the five finalists that will move on to the Steel Timber Sports U.S. Championship semifinals. Now we're ready for the final discipline in round two. To tell us more about the springboard chop, here's Dave Jewett with Duluth Trading Discipline Review. The springboard chop, using your ax and two boards to ascend a nine foot pole standing eight feet in the air to sever a 10 and a half inch block. How do you get to the block though? You have to look at this event in steps. Step one, chop a bottom pocket. That first pocket is gonna be four to six hits. You will be inserting a board into that pocket. Then you will jump on that board to chop a second pocket. 
That second pocket will be made in four to six hits to insert a second board. Jump up, get to the back of the board. That's where you will use every muscle in your body to chop 80 to 90% of the way through the front side of that block. Then you will turn to the back side. You have two choices, chopping up and down, removing the chip, or the new school style of hard downward slices. Let's kick off the always challenging springboard chop with David Moses from Snoqualmie, Washington. Going up against Swampscott, Massachusetts, Tyler White. These guys are competing in Washington State and New York State, respectively. David Moses up very quick on the pole. Ideally, you want to see a nice, clean four-hit pocket. You guys may run him into six hits just to be safer. Over three decades of competition under his belt for David Moses, still pretty spry. Gets up on the springboard. Great board set from David Moses. Just a tiny bit of upslope. You like that? It's settling down to flat as he pushes off. He was starting to, to wane there a little bit in his hit speed, and now he's picked it up a notch. Again, these guys are running against the clock. This is a virtual competition. So that, uh, that noise from your other competitor, the hits from the other competitor, their pace doesn't play in at all. It is you versus yourself. David Moses, a slash-handed cutter. He does not do any up hits. He is only driving down. Started to pinch himself off there a bit. Had to drop his slash hits down, clear a small chip. That cleared the way for the ax so he could slice off the top of that block. So David Moses' official time of a minute 24.60 went much longer for Tyler White, a minute 42.71. Ready to go now with our second heat of the springboard. This is going to be Ben Marshall versus Seven, Mark Bowman. Timber. Ben Marshall very, Three, very dangerously two, close one, to the cut go. line, which will happen after the springboard is completed. So he needs a good cut here. Good, clean. We got a great camera angle here for, for Ben Marshall. Not putting on a blistering pace, but very clean pocket there, doing the job. Bowman's got a little bit of an upslope to his pocket. Not a great angle as he's around the back side of it there. Big pocket going in on that second hole, though, for Boquin. He is working around our side of the tree, which is the far side for him. It's a dangerous thing that happens. When that board gets around the far side of that pole, there, you can see him struggling to get up on it. It is, And he doesn't like that board set as it is. It ends up, you want to be almost jumping straight up onto your board. As you work that pocket over and away from you, you're now jumping over to your board, which can actually force the board to twist sideways out of the pocket. Boquin does not seem pleased with that uh, springboard cut or the springboard set. He has a great cut coming out of the uh, single block. Picked up a lot of points. We're watching those points wither away though right now for Mark Boquin in this uh, springboard event. Ben Marshall seems to have a pretty good board set. It is leaning away from us. He is toes down, heels up just a bit. But a nice flat board set. He's about pinched out of wood. You can see he's down into the small chips. Only little bits of wood flying. And he's got a lot of wood to cut on the back side there. Again, these guys are cutting from both hands. These are switch hitters swinging from both sides of the plate. One side is bound to be stronger, more efficient, more accurate than the other. You want to get as much work done as you can on that front side. Ben is, there he goes, he finds it. So Ben uh, left himself a bit too much wood on the back side, but got the job done regardless. Well, a minute 40.84 for Ben Marshall. Not what he was hoping for. Mark Boca, boy, not what he wanted at all. Two minutes, 11 seconds. Still the time to beat 84.60 seconds laid down by David Moses. This is going to be Adam Lefko going up against Richard Jordan. Richard Jordan def definitely 
leads a good performance on the springboard here. He is dangerously close to elimination. Well, he's got a, a tough, uh, he's got a tall order here going against Adam Lesko virtually, of course, but Adam Lesko is really a solid springboard cutter. This is where his size is to his advantage. He typically boards very quickly. Look at Richard Jordan, though, as he is already up on his second board as well. He's about two swings behind Adam Lesko. Got to make sure he's got some gas in the tank to get this block apart, and it's coming apart well for Richard Jordan. Let's go works around at the opposite side of the block. That first hit, both hits, going errantly high. Unless the front side of his block was way up high, I think he's way out of line here. He's got to get it reeled back in. This is not the time that Adam Lesko wanted to have in this springboard event. Richard Jordan going to reel him in. It's going to be Lesko. Jordan just two hits behind. So the deficit he started that block with at the top is the deficit he'll end with. Lefko takes over the lead now with his 66.81 seconds. Richard Jordan right behind with a 68.65. Final heat of the springboard coming up here. The best time so far, Adam Lefko 66.81. It's going to be Ben Nicely going up against Cassidy Shear. You see some duct tape wrapped around both these poles. Silver on the left, black on the right. Color doesn't matter though, all it's about is the structure. Trying to mimic the natural action of the bark bands these trees together. See, there's no bark on Ben Nicely's tree on the left. Cassidy Shear on the right is full of bark, but again, it's been damaged and splintered along the way. So they wrap the duct tape around there. If any of the fibers are to start to pull apart, that duct tape is gonna help band it all together. Cassidy Shear just rakes across the sky and the ground. Big angle, big slope, presenting the axe to the block, reaches way out. He's done a ton of work on the front side, one more up driver, into the back, into this, uh, I'll call it patented, I have a chance, oh, two hits on the back side. Earlier in the show I was saying how you want to get as much work done in the, on your strong hand side as possible. Cassidy Shear clearly did that, only two blows on the back of this block. That thing was dangerously close to breaking off on the front even. Should be just a couple of more hits for Ben Nicely. That one right there, that's going to give him a time of 75.8, but the top spot belongs to Cassidy Shear, 53.43. Yeah, so I mean, that was a, for me, that's a sloppy climb. If I don't go a perfect four and four and I'm into the wood in under 20 seconds, that's not good, but I, I did what I had to do. I opened up too narrow and too wide. I made the pockets what they had to be to have a good conservative cut. I cut the block up top pretty well. Uh, I mean, that should be the top of the pool, even though for me personally, that's that's a marginal at best cut. But first round, regionals, marginal is okay. There we see our final times for Springboard. Cassidy Shear taking the top spot and Adam Lefko right behind. Richard Jordan needed a strong performance to have a chance to move, but unfortunately for him, his third place finish would not be enough to avoid elimination. As we take a look at our overall leaderboard after round two, Ben Marshall and Richard Jordan down at the bottom are eliminated. So now we are down to our final six as we head into round three, final round. As we head into our most unpredictable event, the hot saw, there's no laying up for our six athletes, of which five will punch their ticket to the semifinals. The only thing standing in their way, the most unpredictable and unforgiving event, the 60 horsepower modified super saws, hot saw, is coming up next. But first, one of the athletes with his eyes set on advancing, Mark Boquin spent much of the year off in 2020 training to make the championship stage. But he also found time to give back to his community. Here's more on this athlete in the Ace Hardware Helpful Profile. I'm a part of the Boy Scouts, you know, I help volunteer with them every now and then. I do a little walkthroughs, talk with the Scouts and stuff. And I actually did a little lumberjack demonstration for a Boy Scout troop and a Cub Scout troop. Coach for the soccer team and the youth, youth club. I mean, I love sharing the, the sport and trying to get other people interested and people really, really enjoy it. And I love helping the community. I love helping kids, honestly. You know, the soccer is nice to, in any sport, honestly, help kids grow in a sport and uh, learn a discipline and just, you know, work on themselves and on getting better at the sport. It's nice to see uh, progression and 
people wanting to do better and wanting to play, play a sport. Cherry Valley, New York, one of the four locations hosting competitors for our first ever virtual competition. We have athletes competing from around the country vying for one of the 20 spots in the 2021 Steel Timber Sports U.S. Championship semifinals. Now, we're headed into our final round of elimination. Only six athletes remain, but only five will move on to the semifinals. And standing before these athletes is the most unpredictable event of the competition, the hot saw. Start with this heat, featuring Mark Boquin on the left versus Ben Nicely. Well, good on both of these guys. They're on my list of top-notch up-and-coming competitors. If you'd asked me at the start of the day today whether they'd be in the top six, I kind of would have put them right on that bubble, right in that marginal zone. Now, in the hot saw, we have six left, and only the top five finishers will advance to the next round. Two, one. Very close on the go for Ben Nicely. Very thin disc for Mark Boquin. A little bit of hesitation from both of these guys. You'll see our really experienced cutters are just going to roll from one cut into the next, into the next with zero hesitation, zero throttle lift. These guys are just Three, off the pace two, a little bit. One, That's fine. Go. They're looking for clean, safe cuts, pull up some overall points. Looks like two safe cuts there, so a time of 7.29 for Boquin. Ben Nicely, 8.34. Could have been better, could have been worse. It felt good, it was clean. Let's see what it takes me. Good start, uh, good first cut. Good halfway through the second cut, the shirt got sucked in the carburetor. It's my own fault. I knew it was gonna happen. Tucked the shirt in a little bit extra, but got a little close to the saw. Third cut, I had to reset a little bit, but it, overall, good cut. Three, three uh, discs on the floor, that's what I wanted. 30 seconds. They're on the purple saw. As we kick off this next heat of the hot saws, our defending champion, Cassidy Shear, going up against Tyler White. That purple saw is actually his Prince tribute saw. He calls that Purple Rain. An honor to the late Prince, fella, fellow Minnesotan. Cassidy Shear also finishing second in the world championships in 2019, the last time that was contested. Tyler White looking pretty good to make the cut. To move on to the next level here. He doesn't want to make any mishaps. He wants to cut three complete discs here. Here on the left, White on the right. Both of these guys hesitant at the top of the block. Some sparks flying for Tyler White on stand number one. Maybe not enough oil getting down to that chain. Maybe the tension was off on that chain. Maybe just a little bit crooked in the cut, but some sparks definitely flying over on stand number two. Watch this run from Tyler White. Specifically watch the chain and bar in between cuts. You'll see some sparks flying. Little dose there, little back at the top again. He is on that throttle all the way through the cut. No lift, it is go time. A little bit of friction going on with that chain as he's making the transitions between cuts. And a great outcome for Tyler White. He gets the best time of all, 6.77. Cassidy Shear a 7.66 with one heat remaining. The first cut I made really thick and then it's kind of like, Oh boy, here you go. You got to thread the needle on these last two cuts, and I did it, and uh, it, it's an okay time. I mean, I'll, I'll advance, so I'm happy. I'm mostly happy that the day is over. I can now start prepping for the, for the next rounds. Um, it's a fast cut for me. I'm getting better at doing the, the pick and pull to start it kind of thing. I used to stay down and really reef on it, so that's a bit of a new, feeling for me um it's fast a little fat on the first one but like okay first one's fat gotta go thin on the next two focus on your changes and just go i don't know where all the sparks were coming off the bar it looks cool when it happens but i'm like is my bar messed up i hope not but if it is we'll find another bar someplace Four athletes have cut and four athletes have posted a time. Cassidy Shear, Mark Boquin, Tyler White, and Ben Nicely have finished their competition. Now all eyes turn to the final two athletes on deck, Adam Lethko and the veteran David Moses. They'll be cutting for their competition lives. We'll find out who the odd man out will be after the final heat of the hot saw coming up next.
Steel Timber Sports is sponsored by Steel, maker of a full line of gasoline and battery-powered handheld outdoor power equipment. Find yours at SteelUSA.com. By the Duluth Trading Company, the official workwear of Steel Timber Sports. By Ace Hardware. Ace is the helpful place. And by John Deere. Nothing runs like a deer. Mount Gilead, North Carolina, one of the four locations hosting competitors for our first ever virtual competition. We are down to the very end of our Pool A competition. Six athletes remain, but only five will move on. Taking a look at our hot saw leaderboard, four athletes have posted times. We are ready for the final heat of hot saw. Final heat of the hot saw, David Moses needs to cut three discs right here. Adam Lefko. And cruise it along pretty well. He does have a little bit of margin to work with at this point. He doesn't want to completely uh, not post a time himself. David Moses, sounds like that saw is running a little on the rich side, but I also want to point out, you see both these guys sporting the uh, the back supporters, the kidney belts. This is a fashion statement for sure, but oh, yeah. more so it's actually to keep their shirts from getting sucked into the open carburetors on the back of these saws. We've seen bungee straps, we've seen ratchet straps, but a uh, good old kidney belt works pretty good to keep What's your the matter garments. with the old-fashioned cummerbund? Right. <laughs> it works pretty well. I think the frill would get into the... Yeah, maybe so. Okay, launch seek. Ah, trouble on stand... Trouble on stand two and stand one. We got a train wreck going on in this particular heat. Still don't think Moses has three complete discs there. No, he's got a whole pile of partially complete ones. Lefko's Here goes Lefko. He is up and running. Being extra careful there, he may have posted a time. Yeah, and not a great time. I no. mean, half a sec, or excuse me, half a minute, 30 seconds, something like that. But you know what? A time is better than a DQ, which I believe is going to be the case on stand number one. That, in fact, is the case. David Moses disqualified. He will finish outside the top five. What a disappointment. Adam Lethko getting in with an official time of 25.20. And that performance is our John Deere power play. Nothing runs like a deer. Let's go trouble right off the start, but David Moses on the switch to the second cut, got crooked, got thin, went back, tried to pick up the third cut, was crooked, was thin, cut out. Just an absolute train wreck for David Moses. A real tough go. Let's go over on stand number two, though. Mechanical troubles, he got it going, got it done. Like eventually this all started running there for a minute. No, it pulled up good, just didn't take off. I sat in the wood before it had taken off. It's a little sluggish. Uh, I got my cuts off, still didn't panic completely. Just a little bit of panic was involved there, but uh, still got them off and uh, got some points. That's what matters. Better than a DQ. Yeah, I didn't do it very good. Too big, of, too big of the first cookie is too big. So I tried to make the second cookie small, and it just didn't work out. The first five have punched their tickets to the Steel U.S. Championship semifinals. Cassidy Shear, Mark Boquin, Tyler White, Adam Lefko, and Ben Nicely. That's going to do it for Pool A, but join us next as 10 more athletes battle for the next five spots at the semifinals.